Okay. Um, and then I'm going to zoom in here so you can actually read it. So this is problem 70 from um, the last section, 3.5 on variation. So it's not like it's it's different from the wind speed, but the same the process is going to be similar. Um, variation problems, the, basically the only way to get used to them is doing lots of different types. So we have the work W required to lift an object varies jointly. So jointly means that we are multiplying two things together. So, oops. Ah. So we're going to be multiplying here. So uh, jointly with the object's mass and with the height. So that means we're multiplying the mass times the height. So they're telling us the work is equal to something. Um, so whenever we have variation, we always have a constant that we need to find. So you always have k, which is some constant that you need to figure out what the number is. And then we have mass times height multiplied together. So we're going to have k, m, h. Um, sometimes they say like mass squared, and then you have to add an exponent. In this case, we don't have any exponents, so we're just directly multiplying all these together. So your first thing with variation is to translate that first sentence. And they always start out with your variable and then what it's equal to. You always have a k, and then what follows is your variables. So then they give us information. So then it says the work required to lift a 120 kilogram object. So that is the mass. So I have my k, but I know the mass is going to be 120 kilograms. And then h is the height. So when they say 1.8 meters, that's going to be our height. So that's going to be 1.8. And then they're telling us the work. So that's 2,116.8. So when we do variation problems, ignore units. Some people worry about the units and they're like, oh, my units aren't matching. Don't worry about that because... All the, the conversions behind the units and everything, that's all taken care of when we solve for K. So we don't have to worry about that. We don't really have to worry about what the units on K are because we're not a physics class. If you're in physics and you're doing something like this, you'll need to know the units. But we're not physics, so we just care about the numbers. So you plug in the numbers that you get from your second equation or you have the second sentence, and then you need to solve that for k, because we can't get an equation until we know what that constant is. So that means I have to multiply 120 by 1.8. So my calculator says that's 216. So this is going to be 216 k. Now I need to solve for k, so I need to divide both sides by 216. And this is actually coming out, luckily we don't have to round, it comes out exactly to 9.8. Um, sometimes you have to round and we base that to how many decimal places. So they give us numbers with one decimal place, so we'd round to one decimal place. But this came out exactly with, we don't have any decimals to round. So now that I know k, I know my formula is w equals 9.8 m h. So then I look at the last sentence where it says, find the amount of work required to lift a 100 kilogram object. So they're giving us mass, which is in kilograms. So m is 100. And then you're lifting that 1.5 meters. So that's your h. So that last sentence, they're now giving us other numbers to plug in so that we can find what the work is. So then I just multiply 9.8 times 100 times 1.5, and then I get the work as 1,470. And I don't care about the units. This is not let physics worry about that. <laughs> We're just looking at the numbers. So probably the hardest part is getting that first step, translating it to the um, equation. 
and then from there plugging in the numbers. But once you plug in the numbers, then you're just solving, and then you're plugging in numbers again. 